Hello everyone and now welcome to a game between Happy and Lin Gua Gua. This taking place here on Last Refuge. Honestly, I can't really think you aren't a good person from all you told us in the many years of your career. You seem like a good man and father. Well, good good is relative like right like white is relative to what it's being compared against, right? So if you if you yeah, have like white snow versus I don't know, white pants after 10 years. You're like, oh, you know what? That doesn't look that clean. So what I've learned over the years is if I think I'm good, compare myself to a better standard of white. And I find I find different ways to improve. You can always find someone. You can always make yourself feel good by comparing yourself to a darker shade of white. Um, but that isn't the point of well, trying to improve yourself, right? Anyways, thank you for the kind words. And let's go ahead and jump straight into this game here on Last Refuge. Lin Gua Gua versus Happy. Game getting underway as it will be a Blade Master with Grunts going up against what I'm assuming to be Death Knight and Ghouls in Two Crypt Beans. Thank you for the sub, PJ Nom Nom Nom. Um, for all you guys out there who say thank you for me uh, to... Um, well, keep this wonderful game going. I got to say thank you to you as well, as you guys are pretty much the reason why I do these casts. Um, I enjoy the game. I would watch games um, if, if even if I wasn't recording. But because there is, I guess, a viewer base out there who enjoys these casts, I kind of get to watch and share them with you. You should do a philosophy vid one day. <laughs> philosophy vid. Well, I don't know. Um if they become popular, I don't know. Thumbs up, um, leave a comment in on YouTube if you guys want me to do a philosophy vid. It's it's just one of those things that is, is pretty difficult um, to talk about here in this day and age on the internet because, well, no one, if you want to find someone who agrees with you, you're definitely gonna find someone who agrees with your opinion um, because that's, that's just the way the internet works. And if you want to find someone to get mad at, you're going to be able to find that as well. So um, be, do, do, no, do tend to be careful what you're doing on the internet if you're really looking to reinforce your own opinion or if you are looking to actually um, educate yourself a bit more, even if it is popular or not popular to those around you or popular to your own opinion. Coming back around, four Shoal Trapper will get cleaned up here. Death Knight does not have, does not have the, did sell the Scroll of Town Portal, but interestingly didn't pick up the Sacrificial Skull. So not quite sure what this play is coming in from Happy. Um, is this a faster tech to tier two, perhaps? I don't see, yeah, that's a faster tech to tier two. All right, so interesting call. Selling the scroll of Twilight Porto to go for a faster tech to tier two. Didn't pick up the sacrificial skull and only has five acolytes. Now, Death Knight does get up to level two here. Gonna go ahead and clear out this forest troll trapper creep camp here. That did pick up claws of attack plus five. Meanwhile, down to the south, Blade Master going after the Knoll Assassins and will be able to clean this creep camp up pretty quickly as well. He's picked up claws of attack plus five. And with that circlet of nobility, has plus seven damage. Noel Overseer should get cleaned up here. Meanwhile, what is the Death Knight doing? Death Knight trying to make its rounds and run across. Perhaps he's going to be able to take out that Noel Overseer. Noel Overseer needs one more shot. And well, Blade Master of Ling Gua Gua beautifully doing that move right there as we see. Well, uh, well, Windwalk Strike now going after some of those units. Another, well, another um, scroll of speed trying to be used. Grunt actually getting swarmed out here as Happy going to clear off the remainder of this Noel Warding Creep Camp. All right, Death Knight will get to level three here without a problem. Forest Troll High Priest applying inner fire to all of these other targets here. But that Forest Troll High Priest will get taken down pretty quickly. That medium armor just doesn't do much against a swarm full of ghouls. One Acolyte down to the south, still doing a little bit of scouting. Yeah, that is a scouting Acolyte there. And is he going to purposely try and wake up some creeps? That is the question. As that Acolyte is dancing a little bit back and forth, it will end up getting denied by creeps. But, uh, well... The Blade Master of Lin Gua Gua is going to be taking a bit of damage too. Meanwhile, 
Death Knight, still sitting at level 3 here, does have one more Ritual Dagger Note and that Rod of Necromancy as well. Could easily, well, get some heals onto this Death Knight if he wants to by sacrificing a Skeletal Minion, if that is his plan, as there's another one of Illusion Death Knight now just going about and scouting around. Meanwhile, Blademaster going after this Ogre Magi creep camp here. Looks like he's going to be dealing some damage onto that M unit here. Ogre Magi down to 99. Death Knight is going to get the Death Coil. Yes, does get the experience. Blademaster still seen at level 2, but the item, I believe, was picked up by that Blademaster. Another Circlet of Nobility, perhaps? Yeah, another Circlet of Nobility. I don't think it drops a Ring of Protection plus 3 since it's a higher level green creep camp. Off to the north here. Death Knight trying to use that illusion alongside a swarm of ghouls to get a surround onto that grunt there. Is he going to be able to do it? Doesn't look very strong at all as, yeah, this is not looking good straight out of the gates for Lin. Shadow Hunter is out onto the battlefield. Now we are teching the tier 3 already. So this is an extremely fast tech to tier 3 by both sides as the Lich is now being trained. Both sides with relatively small armies here as the Shadow Hunter does have a handful of items items ready to go and perhaps will creep away from that blade master but blade master hasn't gotten to level three yet and without level three well without level three the blade master can't really do that much harassment healing salve on the blade master to recover a little bit of hit points here as the blade master's wind walk may be coming to an end all right breaks that wind walk right before um it comes to an end there and perhaps trying to still inch a little bit more experience meanwhile the shadow hunter off to the north clearing out creep camps away from that blade master experience one of the um, well creeps and creep experience one of the forgotten um, resources on the map when you're comparing a game and that's exactly what the shadow hunter is trying to do he's trying to get experience onto onto himself while the blade master is just buying time that death knight however it does have a level advantage over that blade master and the blade master doesn't have that much hit points or well mana so he can't really do that much harassment shadow hunter gonna go ahead and finish clearing off that creep camp off to the north there meanwhile uh, blade master trying to clear things up as the lich now making its way down to the south here perhaps gonna nope not clear out those creep camps as many of those creep camps are just oddly oddly barren at this point in stage in the game 36 supply compared to 32 whoever gets creep jack next is going to have an even more difficult time as the blade master may try to come and engage there's another uh, well wind walk to dodge that last bit of damage again all right both sides looking to clear out orange creep camps here um wind riders now joining in on the battle and the wind rider switch in tech we are at Fortress, so we could actually be going to Envenom Spears as well, as we are going into reinforced defenses too. A quick hex onto the Forest Troll High Priest, making sure that the one Forest Troll High Priest isn't able to just constantly well, bring out a bunch of healing here as the Blade Master stays at level 2. Ogre Mauler, Shadow Hunter now staying getting to level 2 as well. Blade Master should be able to get to level 3 after this level 5 Ogre Mauler is taken down. And with that, that is going to be a big, a big, um, well, the power spike, a double level up for Lin Gua Gua and the Orc Army. Lich looking to get to level two as well, but who needs level two when you have that Orb of Corruption, Gloves of Haste, and Claws of Attack plus five. That Lich already dishing out a lot more damage as we also see an Obsidian Statue to, well, push mana over the top for these three heroes. The sudden transition into Wind Riders. Well, there's a Kodo Beast as well. Is it going to scout out this location here? Ogre Magi trying to clear out this creep camp. Kodo Beast, what is it doing? It's walking towards this. Should not be in this engagement at all. What is it trying to do? Is it going to try to dine and dash? Yes, it is. It is now trying to dine and dash, but it does get Frost Nova and could easily get surrounded. All right. Easily getting surrounded right there. That was a little bit greedy of Lin Gua Gua as a Blade Master now going after an Obsidian Statue. Does take it down, but... Well, trading an Obsidian Statue for a Kodo Beast, not quite sure who wins out there. Reinforced or defense is now done. Ling Gua Gua could train up some more units, not quite sure what's happening. Only one Wind Rider overall. And is that one Wind Rider going to be able to do enough? Watchtower is in position. Here we are, here we go, going into an engagement. Torrent Chieftain does not have level 2 yet, so only has Endurance Aura, so faster attack speed for all of this orc army however 41 supply compared to 41 supply is the home field advantage going to be enough trying to buy a couple of additional items here as that voodoo lounge does end up getting taken down by happy 
happy. Also with a potion of greater mana there, plenty of dust of, dust of appearance charges as the unit's still swarming around every which way. All right, Happy taking this opportunity to go after this mercenary creep camp. Death Knight will get up to level 4 here. There's Dust of Appearance. Blade Master not revealed here. There's level 4 now as we see a purge onto the Obsidian Statue. Orb of Lightning on that Blade Master. Absolutely huge, shutting down the mobility as the Kodo Beast wants to eat up a little bit more. Torrent Chieftain still sitting at level 1. Otherwise, it would be putting its foot down. Grunt getting taken down here. Both sides suffering pretty heavy casualties as the Kodo Beast is going to go ahead and dine and dash, so to speak as it wants to, well, slowly chew on that ghoul. All right, Blade Master down to 122 hit points, down to 120, taking a little bit of damage there, going to go ahead and heal up. Torrent Chieftain, there's a Death Coil onto the Blade Master. Long distance Death Coil gets the job done. No Wind Walk and no Voodoo Lounge to get in a little bit of instant healing. Just enough there. All right, Kodo Beast here. And Kodo Beast is digesting once more. We are looking at Wind Riders heading off to the north and 44 supply compared to 39. But remember, there is a ghoul in the belly of this Kodo Beast, which is definitely going to help out. Um, well, Lin Gua Gua taking up a bit of supply. Blade Master, however, also getting resurrected. So that's going to take a little bit of time here as the Shadow Hunter makes its way over and sees, well, the Death Knight, Lich, and Alchemist still clearing out creeps after all this time. All right, I, event I originally thought we were going to be looking at Crypt Fiends, but no, this is this mass ghoul, ghoul frenzy strategy, and those obsidian statues are constantly being replaced. They are rather expensive units, but without the Blade Master to get that orb of lightning damage onto them, I'm, I'm not quite sure how much is going to be really be done. Lich trying to add up more or just trying to shoo away all of these units, but without a stomp on that Torrent Chieftain, well, that Torrent Chieftain just... Well, literally cannot put his foot down to stop those swarming childish ghouls. Meanwhile, back off to the north here, we're looking at perhaps a potential clearing of this relatively difficult creep camp here. Wind Riders, all right, here we are, here we go. Are we going to go into an engagement? And now um, trying to clear out a orange creep camp right underneath the nose of Happy. All right, four straw high priest going to get cleared up here. Torrent Chieftain absorbing quite a bit of damage. Kodo Beast actually eating the forest troll berserker and the ogre mauler. So with this, they are not going to get the experience. They're going to get the experience, but they're not going to be able to get the items. That is actually an interesting play. This is something that I rarely ever see professional players do. But Lin Gua Gua knows that he's in a bit of a situation and trying to go for well a strategy any way he can. Slowly digesting the forest troll berserker and that ogre mauler will give experience and the gold just not those items all right spiked barricades was researched for the for um well lin gua gua so this mass ghoul strategy is gonna well suffer a little bit meanwhile however happy clearing out the other red greek camp on the far side of the map as the blade master now going to town oh this one acolyte actually blocking position right there that is a big big deal indeed as there was well a um there was a Book of the Dead to try and clear out this creep camp here. Dust of Appearance should be used. Blade Master trying to get away, and it looks as though Dust of Appearance, and he will be able to run away quickly and easily. Meanwhile, back to the bottom right-hand side of the map here, Kodo Beast, um, Torrent Chieftain, still trying to get up to level 3 here. Wind Rider is going to finish things off, and this is going to be interesting. If the Torrent Chieftain um, gets up to level 3 because of the digesting on those Kodo Beast, um, that just might actually come as a bit of a shock or in, in terms of the timing. Like, could you imagine you see your entire army walking, uh, your entire opponent's army walking towards you and you see your your army walking and suddenly you see a level up. Well, the Kodo Beast digesting the Force Troll Berserker did give it level three. However, it didn't happen at a strange time um, while Happy was looking. All right, that Ogre Mauler is you know, a little bit beefier, takes a little bit more time to digest than that Forest Troll Berserker. 48 supply compared to 50. Lin Gua Gua is trying to get back into this game, but we'll have to deal with what I assume is going to be a level 5 Death Knight here in just a moment. Warsong Battle Drums also giving a bit of a damage bonus as well. Thorium Weapon upgrades for those Wind Riders, um, Kodo Beast, that does not get that upgrade, but I believe the berserk or the berserkers definitely do. So plus six damage there. 
That is level two Warsong Battle Drums upgrades here. So that is going to be some big damage indeed. Meanwhile, Blade Master still trying to just go after these targets and units here, perhaps trying to have focused some of them down. Blade Master is just slowly wandering around here as the um, well, Blade Master may be forced to try and use a yes, potion of invulner lesser invulnerability and now try and wind walk away. Is he going to be able to get away there? There goes the Death Coil Blade Master now trying to retreat back. And that is going to be annoying. Give me a second. All right, I'm back. Let's go ahead and continue the game. All right, Blade Master able to slip away. Does the fellow neutral units know that their brothers are swallowed? Um, you know, that's that's a good question. If, if a Kodo Beast swallows a unit and then heads towards other creep camps, does it naturally aggro? I guess that's a good question there. There's a, a big stomp there. Torrent Chieftain going to go ahead and get teleported back away as well. 56 supply compared to 50 as Lin Gua Gua does a tactical retreat. Blade Master, well, we're definitely going to see a definite hero level advantage by, um, by Happy as he goes into this next fight. All right, back down to the south side here. Um, well, I believe it is two zero upgrades uh, plus six damage. So essentially four zero upgrades because of those Kodo Beasts pushing that damage a little bit further. Uh, Blade Master, where is it? There it is. Hiding amongst all those units plus 26 damage um, between everything else there as the Blade Master does a quick run by and sees now the main undead army. All right. Spiked barricades could cause a bit of problems. Peons are quickly running over to uh, into battle stations to try and help. Torrent Chieftain going to try and land down a stomp. Does find a couple of ghouls and here we are. Here we go. Torrent Chieftain. Potion of invulnerability straight up using it. Are we going to see another stomp here in just a moment? Blade Master going straight after those um, obsidian statues to try and prevent any healing as a low hit point raider able to hide in the back here. Both sides fighting their way through Torrent Chieftain trying to, to stay alive here. No Voodoo Lounge. No, there is the Voodoo Lounge as the both sides are still engaging here. There's a healing wave bouncing back around. Alchemist falls at level 3. Torrent Chieftain somehow still staying alive. Gets in another big massive stomp as the home field advantage really, really shifts things over and happy losing this game here. Uh, focusing all of that attention on that Torin Chieftain. That Torin Chieftain um, actually has really high armor, even though it only shows plus a three right now. Remember, that's also with this um, corruption ability. So his normal armor is at 10. The Lich's corruption actually removing some of that there. But because of this voodoo lounge off to the north, well, that completely shifted things around here. Also, look at the supplies um, shift. 44 supply compared to 50. The second obsidian statue was about to be taken down. And low hit point, Torin Chieftain and Raider were also able to reach the back. The Death Knight had not gotten any additional experience at all. So, like, the dominoes were pretty much already falling. If the units try to retreat away, the obsidian statue would get taken down easily by the Orb of Lightning um, proc effect. Um, there's a ghoul in the belly of this Kodo, and this is just a bunch of dominoes setting up. Happy knows that he was he had just let this game, um, like or not th really throw the game, but he knew that this would have been an uphill battle to try and that will try and, and get back into this game, even though he had a major advantage. Also, look at the amount of gold that Lin Gua Gua is sitting on, 1,000 versus um, 300. So, yeah, that is a much, much larger discrepancy there. Blade Master would have gotten to level 4 um, off... Um, and I believe also the Shadow Hunter could have gotten to level 4 uh, pretty quickly as well. Yeah, the, the burrows, the watchtowers are still firing away. The ghouls would have just been sitting there absorbing a lot of damage. I hope you guys enjoyed that. That seemed like an uphill battle for Lin Gua Gua as he was slow out of the gate. But happy tripping at the finish line, giving Lin Gua Gua the win. I feel like you didn't used to see people target the statues as much as you're... Oh, yeah, no. Uh, I always, I've always said that the obsidian statues is the glue that holds the undead army together. The reason why the heroes are as strong as they are is because they are able to get a, a lot of cast, a lot of spells off. And that's, that's just generally what works for the undead. Um, Blade Master with that wind walk, being able to easily get to those obsidian statues 
is a big thing. That's one of the reasons why uh, the Blade Master is so strong in that undead matchup. Being able to win walk past that front line of units may, um, you know, give it some survivability items. Blade Master very used to having potions of greater healing and potions of invulnerability to try and take those down. Um, some of some of the other um, some of the other races and um, like well. But human has a little bit of a difficult time because you can't... I don't think they really have spells that s target them aside from Blizzard. Um, maybe Thunderclap. Um, but, you know, Demon Hunters have Mana Burn. Anything where you can have a little bit of range to and be able to hit those targets, also a big deal. The fact that they're mechanical units, um, well, ma makes it um, tough because Stormbolt doesn't work and, and other, you know biological it's targeting spells anyways let's go ahead and look at the final score here no surprise here lin gla gla with the lower final score as he had less heroes and less units but overall in the end did come away with the victory that little bit of gold difference um, and maybe the additional lumber being able to get that reinforced defenses and dual watchtowers with those spiked barricades, giving, making those ghouls not being able to swarm their targets easily. Let me know what you guys thought about this game. Were you surprised by the ending? Um, well, I know I was. Anyways, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Hope you guys enjoyed it.